Hi, welcome. I know it's been a minute. Sorry about that, but I'm Marina. Hello, welcome. I'm that one girl that likes to talk a lot about houseplants and welcome to Millennial Planter. It is everyone's favorite video. Everybody loves favorites videos. I feel like they do really well on my channel. I just thought I would put a twist to it. I haven't really seen anybody doing these videos. I wanted to just kind of wrap up these favorites and wrap up this year and share my top seven favorite plants of the whole year, of the whole 2021. Trust me, this was really hard to <laughs> uh, pick, just seven. Uh, but I tried to pick one from almost every genus that I have in my house, which aren't a very wide variety. And uh, let me just say, I wanted to pick at least 10 more. <laughs> but these seven have have really just like stuck with me and really kind of I think about them every day or I admire them every day or they're plants that have just been really core and I consider them like really good classics from in my collection and I just yeah I wanted to share this and as always I'd love to hear what your top favorite plants of the year have been if you can even pick I know it's really hard <laughs> but let me know in the comments also can you guess what types of plants I'm going to say I'm sure some of you can some of these plants you also might have seen before so it's going to be like a little update type of video if you know the plants anyways <laughs> without yapping on too much let's just get on to the video now the question is which one do I want to start with so the first plant I think I shared this in a favorite sometime over the summer whenever I first got this plant it was a big box find I found it at I think Lowe's but it is none other than the adorable Schifflera plant but really I have just been obsessed with the growth pattern and the shape of the leaves and just all of it really it's such an easy care plant it requires none of my attention really I don't even think I water this thing like once a week uh it's not a thirsty gal at all it came in this cute little terracotta pot which I absolutely love but I ultimately ended up putting it in this type of plastic thing oh I just realized it has some roots growing out at the bottom too but I feel like they're super underrated I don't I don't know I don't really hear many people talking about them maybe they're troublesome plants to some people. I imagine they probably attract spider mites, but they're just super cute and I don't understand how can't you not love a plant like this. Even when they get bigger, they're just so cool and funky and just something different. I like to get plants that have different types of growth patterns and different types of foliage just to kind of break up the collection and the monotonous of green leaves you know? <laughs> but Schiffler plant, definitely a plant I stare at every day, which is weird, but he's super cute. I want to apologize if you hear any background noises. It's a uh, school break and I'm dying. I'm dying, y'all. It's been a struggle. Plant number two <laughs> is a plant I know I haven't shared in quite some time on my channel. And it I've had this plant since I think it was either February or April. So almost a year now. And it just recently started doing something within the past couple months. And I'm so excited. But it is the absolutely adorable little Stefania erecta. Oh, look at how cute it is. I am just absolutely obsessed with this plant. And it's so okay <laughs> this is a caudex plant which means it has a little potato so most times I want to say nine times out of ten when you get these types of caudex plants you just get this potato and you have to propagate it essentially basically you plant it in some soil and just wait for it to do its thing and like I said it has been almost a year without any action and then finally it is sprouting the cutest little adorable little leaves and I, I don't know what it is about plants but sometimes I just want to eat them and I just want to eat this thing because it's so cute. Really the trick for me with this plant was watering it, giving it more water and humidity than what I was doing. Uh, I thought, you know, a caudex plant holds a lot of moisture, which I'm sure it's true, but they also come from very high humid places, super rainy places. So once I upped the watering and I locked in that humidity, this thing just started to do its thing and now it's fully rooted. I can 
I can't pull the potato out before it was just like a rock and I was able to pull it out really gently but now it's really like rooted in there and it's growing and it's so cute now I just need to put it in some sort of like terrarium so it can just keep growing and the leaves will be fine but I am just so excited about seeing all this new growth really when I think of a top favorite of the year this plant really just epitomizes that because I I really truly love it and I didn't rot it which is a big f <laughs> accomplishment in my household <laughs> if you've seen any of my videos I tend to rot a lot of things um but this one I did not <laughs> so there we go plant number six Stefania erecta the next plant is no stranger to this channel uh you guys have even helped me named it and it is none other than Harry, my philodendron squamiferum. I know it's been a while since I have shared this dude, but he's doing so well. Look at all of that new growth. So last time I showed him, at least from what I remember, he just had this one big leaf that was fully rooted and he had a new leaf coming out. So this is one of his leaves he's put out then. And this is another one and he has one that's literally about to pop out of the catafil so it's so exciting he's doing so well he has these super pink beautiful hairy leaves petioles which is why he's called <laughs> which is why we named him Harry because it's just it's quite fitting so I am kind of debating now if I should just cut this leaf off just for the sake of storing it it's really hard to store a plant that looks like this. I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> like if it was all just like one big plant, that would be easy. But the fact that it's like small and then massive, it's just, it, it makes it really awkward to put places. <laughs> but he's doing really well. He doesn't require much humidity. He's getting some good grow light action. Just such an easy plant, such an easy plant. If you have been thinking about getting a Squamy, I really recommend it. I did have a rather mature one, mind you, and I do feel like a lot of times when you buy more mature plants, they acclimate to your house a lot better, but I couldn't ask anything else from this plant. It has just been so rewarding and so awesome to watch grow, and I can't wait to get these baby leaves to this size. But yeah, that's really, He's so cute. Also, here's your little update. So cool to see all that growth. And I can't wait to see what he's going to look like in a few months from now. Once growing season comes, wow, he's going to be a beast. I might have to start propagating him soon too. But here we go. Harry, my philodendron squamiferum. Plant number four is a plant that is not really much of anything at the moment. Well, kind of. <laughs> it is my Raphidophora cryptantha. Here we go. This is what I mean by it's not much of anything. I, I, I really don't think I've shared this plant either, uh, but I'm actually really proud and shocked at this plant and how far it's come. I actually got this as some cuttings from a friend. She had a whole bunch of them and I kind of just threw them in a prop container and I left them there for months 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 and it just got to the point it just it grew like crazy but the leaves all stayed really small because these are shingling plants so they like to attach to wood and trees out in nature and then they get these really huge big beautiful leaves but they always start out as kind of like terrestrial plants which are just plants that just crawl along the floor looking for something to climb on so that's kind of what this plant was doing in my propagation container that I had it in. <laughs> it was just so teeny tiny and I didn't know how to plant it up which is why it was in that container for so long. The roots were really small and they weren't really um they weren't really established at all and one day I was just like you know what I'm just gonna wing it we're just gonna do it and see what happens. If it dies I have more in that container and lo and behold this is the part that I ended up um planting like that one part right there and I really thought it was going to die so I tried to give it as much humidity as I can and I put all that moss around it and then I attached it to this long <laughs> trellis which is actually a old prototype of one of the trellises we have out at my work now at Trey Leaf um, so she wanted me to try this. This wood is actually cedar wood, so it's really ideal for plants to climb on. It's not coated. Cedar is pest and rot 
proof. I don't really want to say proof because it can happen, but it's less likely to happen with cedar wood. But as you can see, it shot up this whole new vine. It actually shot out two vines and it is really starting to attach right there. I hope it's focusing, but it's really cool. It's it's climbing and I'm so excited. Getting stuff to climb can be a real bitch sometimes. I'm not even going to lie. Like if you're using a sphagnum moss, a lot of times you have to keep the moss kind of moist, at least a little bit if you want those roots to attach. But this wood, I didn't even spray it. I just literally left the cryptantha like it. I let it do its thing. And once I saw that new vine start to come out, that's when I started to tape it and attach it, Velcro it to the wood. And now as you can see, it is starting to climb and it has a long way to go. And I can't wait. I just, I can't wait to see what it does and how long it takes to get big. I just, this is probably one of the most exciting things I've done with my plants. So I definitely want to do more of this type of attaching, getting my plants to climb on wood. I know that's kind of like the thing now, and it just so happens that I work with wooden trellises. Um, we actually have this trellis called Zella, and it is a wooden plank, and it is made for shingling plants. So now I have the opportunity to get all these really like pretty cut out trellises and get my plants to climb on. So stay tuned for that in 2022. We are going to be attaching some plants onto some wooden poles, trellises. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. Raphidophora cryptantha. Not much to look at yet, but next year we will do an update in like six months and you guys are all going to be mind blown. I'm going to be mind blown. <laughs> now on to the exciting parts. We are doing the top three plants. This one was really, really hard, but the top three plants are just plants that have grown like crazy they are once again plants that don't really require much attention for me and still reward me so much even after i have used and ab abused them even after i've cut them back traded them sold them um they just have bounced back miraculously despite the rumors that people have told me i have been afraid to own every single one of these plants in my top three but they are just amazing so the first one would be my monstera elbow i have cut this thing back maybe i want to say two to three times the last time i cut it back i definitely regretted it the most because it had beautifully fenestrated leaves and it was just it was the ideal elbow that you think of in your head you can see right there that little nub is where I cut it back so it was just down to this one little leaf and I was I was scared after that chop I was scared the variegation was it wasn't going to come back but the variegation gene is strong within this elbow and I am very thankful for that and since then it's put out this leaf this leaf and then this leaf so uh, it's just it's so pretty it always has given me that really pretty marbled effect which has always been my favorite rather than you know like a half moon type of situation um i haven't really gotten much browning on her which is really awesome however i do not try to i don't touch her often because a lot of people do say like the oils kind of make the white go away faster the white brown faster but but this monstera elbow has just been so easy and such a fast grower despite all the white that it's had and it's really kind of mind-blowing especially all the rumors that i have heard about monstera elbows i got um the plant originally as cuttings and i have propagated my elbow like three times now and all times have been successful. Actually, when I first cut this plant is when I first started to try perlite propagation, which was uh, about a year ago. So that was really exciting. Definitely learned something new. And yeah, it's just been really easy, just like a regular Monstera. You know, like everybody loves Monsteras because they're so easy going and they're such classics. And I feel the same way about the elbow. It's really easy. It's really fast growing and it just rewards you so much. So yeah, there we go. My little Monstera elbow. Can't wait to see this one grow and get those fenestrated split leaves again. Super cute. You're so cute. Ooh. 
I don't know which one to save for last. Okay, I'm gonna save, okay. So the next one should be no surprise really. It is an Ethereum and it is my king Ethereum. And can you, like how can I even put this? <laughs> this plant is insane, okay. So you can see it is massive, my Ethereum Vecchii. Look at that leaf, so ripply. Like, can I have washboard abs like this, please? <laughs> um, so there's the newest leaf. It's coming in nice and juicy, nice and ripply. And once again, another plant that is so easy. If you want to get to in into Anthurium, I cannot recommend the Anthurium Vecchii enough. I got this as a seedling for $10 over a year ago and it has just been, this is how much it's grown in a year. This is how big it has gotten, which is really cool. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with it in another year from now because storing this thing is hard. Like it takes up so much a circumference and like all the leaves are shaped weird, I guess because the light is like, the grow light is, I don't, I don't know, but it's, it's insane. It has thrown out two pups that I've propagated and traded and it has just been amazing. I can, I love watching this plant grow really and truly. And even when it's not giving me a new leaf, which is probably, I don't know, once every two to three months, like it's quite often. Um, like once a leaf is fully hardened off, it's not long before a new one comes out still just always staring at it and admiring it and just really not really believing that I grow this from a seedling. Um, somebody that is constantly killing plants, I can actually grow Anthurium. <laughs> shocker. I know it's a shocker to me too, but King Anthurium has truly brought me so much joy and I'm really glad that I made that purchase way back in the day. Uh, but yeah, just a really beautiful plant. I can't wait to start experimenting with pollinating Anthurium. Hopefully I'll start getting some flowers come springtime and cross pollinating some of them. That'll just be, I don't know, really cool to do. Maybe share some seeds with y'all. Uh, but yeah, here we go. My second favorite um, plant of 2021. This one will definitely always, always have a big place in my heart. And the last plant on my list, um, once again, if you are, if you've been following me for a while, you should assume and should automatic, automatically know that it is a Hoya and it is none other than Hoya Dakii. Look at that. Oh my goodness. She is so cute. Look at that new leaf she's putting out. Oh. It's literally the perfect little heart-shaped leaf. Oh, not even gonna lie, this Hoya is probably one of the most scared I've been when I had a plant. <laughs> when I first got Hoya Dakii, I got her, I believe, from Gabriella Plants, and I probably got like five or six messages of people sharing their horror stories about this plant, about how they would water it and then the next day it was dead and how it's so hard and everybody's killed it. And I was just like really, wow, like terrified, like, holy crap, am I gonna kill this plant? Am I gonna rot it? Like, what, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna die? Um, but, Lo and behold, somehow she's been doing amazing. I even was able to cut her and uh, trade her and share her with people and she is just keeps growing and I'm so happy. She pretty much is just treated like my other Hoyas, which I never let them get completely dried out. Um, so I don't wait till their leaves get flimsy like a lot of people recommend. I give them a lot of light. Hoyas love light, at least in my experience. I always leave them in a chunky soil and she's just been doing so well these leaves are just getting massive look at that and they're super thick I love that they kind of look like a platypus tail they have that splashiness that veininess the leaf shape it's just everything I love in a Hoya really and truly and I She's even getting a little sun stressed. I just realized that. But yeah, I just, I love this Hoya so much. I look at her every day and I'm just like, wow, how are you doing so well? I don't understand. Um, I am about to re-trellis her too because this tendril 
it's just, it's growing up through the shelf that I have it on and it's just doing the most. And I appreciate you. Thank you for growing like this, but come on, like, come on. Can you at least give me some more leaves? <laughs> but yeah, Hoya Dekii, such a beautiful plant. And I cannot wait. I cannot wait to add more Hoya to my collection in 2022. I haven't really bought any plants lately, but I'm going to try and go on a trading spree. I am on the hunt, on the prowl for a Hoya gun and gating. And I would love to have a Hoya funky eye. They kind of remind me a lot of the Dekii as well, only less veiny. Um, but yeah, definitely some Hoyas that I want. I will be making a wish list video soon, so keep your eyes out for that. But that wraps it up for my top seven plants of 2022, 2021. It's not 2022 yet, Marina. <laughs> but I hope you all have enjoyed this video. I hope you all are staying safe. I hope you all are having a wonderful holiday. Have a wonderful new year. I would absolutely love to hear what your favorite plants have been. Definitely share that in the comments below. Try to pick like three. I know it's really hard, but just try. You know, I know that there's some that just really have stolen your heart. Um, I would have added my Philodendron Varicosum onto this list, but I feel like you all know how much I love Varicosum. It is literally a forever favorite in my collection in the plant world. Varicosum will always be number one. <laughs> so I decided to just like leave my Varicosum out of the limelight, but I'm going to try really hard this year to get those leaves nice and big. So we'll see how big they can get. That'll be a little fun experiment to do and to document but I will see you all in my next video. I hope you all are staying safe, sane, happy, and healthy. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, join the plant community, and give the video a thumbs up if you like these types of planty videos. All right, guys, I will see you soon, maybe in the new year. I'm not sure yet. Okay, bye.